Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show, and it is a special episode because it's the second in a series of viewer-reviewer episodes. Uh, last week it was Tim. He reviewed the Crown XLS 1002 Power Amp. It's got around 25,000 views last time I checked, so it's doing really well. People seem to like it, so there'll be more of these. Uh, but today it's about PJ. PJ is 19 years old, but his father's an audiophile, so he grew up listening to great sound. He knows what great sound sounds like. That's clear. So he sent me an email, and you can too, at audiophiliac at mail.com, and tell me about your system if you want to be an audiophiliac viewer, reviewer for one day. Anyway, so PJ and I talked. I was very impressed with him. And the, the best part of this episode is that he compared a speaker that is loved by a lot of people, the KEF LS50. And he bought it, and yet the KEF LS50 wasn't cutting it. So he listened to ELAC, he listened to Triangle, he listened to Totems. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't happening. So he, he continued his search. He's on the journey. He continued his search and he found the Techniques SB-C700 speakers, which are, like the LS50, a coaxial single driver speaker. And it was the opposite. He just loved the Techniques. Now, you know what? So did I, because I reviewed <laughs> the Techniques SB-C700 and compared it to the LS50, and I had a similar reaction. So we were on the same wavelength, me and PJ. So, um, Check it out. I think you did a great job. Hi, I'm PJ. I'm 19 years old and I live in upstate New York. Uh, today I'm going to talk about my Technix SBC700 bookshelf speakers. Um, I've been an audiophile for the past couple years now, something that I got from my dad, who is now a retired audiophile. Um, but, you know, that just lets me steal all of his old gear. And so I started with his uh, Mirage satellites. Um, with a paired with a Velodyne uh, F1000B servo subwoofer. And then I moved on to his Definitive Technology Towers and finally a pair of uh, Magnapan SMGCs that he had. Um, over the past couple years, I'd say I've been developing a taste for my own sound and um, that led me to search for something, search for my own system, really. Um, and so the past couple months I've spent doing lots of research online, um, visiting lots of stores, trying to audition different things, um, and different equipment, and it's finally led me to my current system, which uh, we'll talk about today. So my situation is a little interesting because um, I'm a student, I'm a freshman in college, and so I have the problem where I have to move back and forth from my dorm rather often. Um, and I have very little space to work with. So the idea of getting a whole system of separates um, and speakers is it was not really possible. And so originally I was looking for a pair of powered bookshelf monitors, um, which led me to find the Totem Acoustic Kinplay, um, which I owned for a little less than a week. Um, they, they were amazing, but I found a couple issues with them, so I ended up returning them. And so then, um, I couldn't really, I wasn't really satisfied with any other uh, powered bookshelves on the market, and so I, I decided to go with semi-separates, I guess you could say. And so I got a pair of Kef LS50s and a Denon receiver, um, the Denon DRA 800H. And so. This was my first like complete system, really. Um, I got the Denon because of its um, practicality, I guess. Um, it's not too massive, and it has everything I need. It's a network streamer. I can hook up my turntable. CD player has enough inputs for everything. Um, and it's got what I consider enough, enough power. It has about 100 watts per channel. Um, and so I thought that would be great with the LS50s. And the LS50s... Um, before I bought them, I knew that they were uh, incredibly hard to drive. That's something that everyone says about them. Um, that's really like the only negative thing I've heard about them. So I was like, okay, I have 100 watts per channel. That should be more than enough. And so I got them, and I had that system for 
a little under three months and I was very unsatisfied basically the whole time. Um, I tried changing just about every variable you could without upgrading my system or like making any other massive purchases really. So I tried positioning, some a few cable switches, all that um, stuff. Uh, and I, I just couldn't make the L50s sound good or sound, sound what I wanted them to sound like, um, which was really disappointing after reading all of the incredible reviews of the L50s and everyone having such high regard for them. Um, and so that was a real bummer because I couldn't, I, I, I knew that it was like a legendary speaker. I knew it, I knew it was a fantastic speaker, but I just really didn't like it. Um, but the option of upgrading my amp or like getting something with higher current, um, something that would drive the LS50s better was not really realistic because there wasn't really anything in my budget that I could do that with. And so I decided that um, finding a speaker alternative was gonna be the right route for me. And so it basically back to the drawing board and I um, started doing all my research again. And then coming across the Technics was very interesting because there's actually such a, a lack of information about them on the internet. Um, on YouTube, there's really no reviews of them uh, Steve has a fantastic article on them on uh, on CNET, but I didn't read that until after I actually bought them. Um, and so I, basically I had no knowledge of these before I bought them. Um, but I went to a store and I auditioned a bunch of pairs of bookshelves, including like the Triangle, ser uh, Triangle like Borea series, Elax, and a bunch of other popular names that I've seen all over the internet. I wasn't happy with any of those. And then just out of curiosity, I listened to these and I was absolutely blown away. Um, and so I, I, at that moment, I kind of decided that like these were the ones. Um, and something that was I was a little skeptical of was I, when I was auditioning them, they were hooked up to roughly $25,000 worth of electronics, of like Macintosh, Parasound, um, stuff that was nowhere near the realm of what I was working with. And so... I was concerned that it would be a similar situation with the LS50s and we we're like, I can't, I don't have the right means to drive these to their, to make them sound like what they sound like in the store. Um, to my surprise, I got them home, hooked them up to my receiver and they sounded absolutely incredible. Um, and I, they, I just plopped them down wherever my stands were um, and it they, they sounded fantastic. Um, and I, I had a week really to, um, compare directly against the LS50s and whatever I did I could not make the LS50s sound like the Technics. That week that I had both the speakers together um, before I sold the LS50s was really educational because I could directly compare the two and I had grown to know the LS50s sound with the receiver that I had uh, quite well after having it for several months and listening to it so much and so it was really easy to distinguish between, between the two speakers and their different uh, sound characteristics. And so one thing that I had like really found with the LS50s that I really didn't like was that I found them really uh, bitey and harsh on the top end, um, which like hurt essentially after a while and was very fatiguing. And um, the bass was really big and almost borderline bloated at times, um, but it didn't extend very low, which was disappointing to me. And so I always found myself adding the sub um, that I had with the Mirages earlier. And that that helped, but it was really hard to blend um, the the subwoofer into the LS50s to make it uh, seem smooth. And I, I could always hear the sub kicking in. And so it was really hard to um, find like a synergy between in that system. Um, and then with the Technics I found with, um, they, are just as bright as the LS50s, if not even more bright. However, it doesn't hurt somehow. And it, it doesn't feel sharp or piercing at all, which is um, really, really amazing because I don't feel like I'm losing any clarity or anything like that with the um, with the Technics. If not, I have I feel that there's, there's more clarity. Um, and then the mid-range feels really, really, it's really, really pronounced. It's kind of in your face, which I like because I listen to a lot of vocal music. Um, and that's something I felt lacked in the LS50s. I felt like the mid-range was um, really like 
it's almost hidden behind everything else. Um, and then, which also could have been a, uh, a result of the amplifier. Um, and the Technic space I found, um, while it was not nearly the, the quantity of bass that the LS50s had, the quality was really impressive. Um, so I find that they extend way lower, um, giving you a really, really full sound. Um, uh, while it doesn't like slap you in the face or kick you in the chest um, like the LS50s might do, it um it gives a much better overall experience I'd say um, because I don't feel I don't ever feel the need to add the sub um, especially in the small room like I have <clears throat> and also the bass coming out of the Technics is really um, I find it to be quite tonal as well where instead of just having some like boominess uh, and uh, it's not just a physical response there is tonality to it um where the l50s it was kind of just um the presence of a, a loud noise almost um so yeah so that was that's my experience with the uh the technics uh spc 700 um compared to the my experience with the kef l50s uh thanks for watching